Hello and welcome to another video with me, Jo, from JH Leather. Today we'll be learning how to make the studded leather dog collar. For this tutorial you will need a strip of leather, a buckle and a D-ring, as well as some studs to make the studded part of your collar. Ok, so first things first, we'll be finding the best end of the leather. Now once you've got the best end, you'll want to cut your egg point on the best end. This will be where your holes will go and this will be the point end of your dog collar. So once you've cut your egg point, you're going to want to mark out the holes on your dog collar. The first hole is 2 inches from the very end of the point. And then for this collar, because it was a bit of a shorter collar, I've done them uh, my holes three quarters of an inch apart and there will be five holes in total. You will also want to mark about one and a quarter inch away from the very last hole and this will be where our stitching will end. So once you've marked your holes out, you just want to use your dividers and um, level them up to the centre of the strap. We now want to mark the overall length of the collar, so put the overall length on the centre hole of your dog collar and then mark just with the end of the tape measure where that will be and then straighten it up with your set square. So this collar is going to be lined and to do this we will be measuring from the crew hole just past the end of the stitching to make sure we've got enough room to cover the back side of our collar. So once you've marked it out, just mark a straight edge across and cut with your head knife. We can now edge the whole of the grain side with the number one edge tool. And then you will want to mark out on the flesh side that where that last hole was um, for your stitching mark. And we'll just edge sort of from there to the end of the point. So on the flesh, it is just the very end of the point that we will be edging. The next part we'll be doing on our collar is staining the edges. You want to stain these both sides of the uh, collar and polish with either a bone or your stain cloth. So once you've done staining, you will then crease around the whole of the grain side of your collar. So as I mentioned earlier, this was going to be a lined collar, so we need to split that part of the collar. So where your crew hole is, you want to mark 2 inches, or about 2 inches sort of from that, to the straight end that you've cut. You don't want to split the point end, uh, if you do that you'll need to remake your collar. So you want to mark that and then you want to split it so you have either about a third to a half thickness remaining. Now if you want to do some test pieces first, that is a good idea. I've already done mine so I can split my collar straight away. So as you can see we've got a nice thinnish bit of leather here which will make up the back of our dog collar. Right, so we're now going to mark out for our crew hole. So where your centre crew mark will be, you just want to mark either side of it with your dividers, just a little line, and this will just form a little sort of guide to go to for your crew punch. If you need to make this wider or narrower, you can do. It's just to help guide us when we punch our crew to make sure it's nice and straight. Once you've marked where your crew hole is going to go, you want to get either a bit of leather or a punch block to put underneath and punch your crew all the way through. So once we've punched our crew through, we can take out the back of it with a number 6 edge tool. Right, 
Okay, so once we've done that, we just want to make the turn on our collar. So just turn it over, being careful not to um, let the ends of it split. If you need to sort of wet it a bit, you can do, that's not a problem. So once you've done that, you want to put your buckle in and we will now be marking where our stitch marks will go. So you want to put your buckle in and have it nice and tight to that end. That will be where our first stitch marks go. Once you've got that, you can take your buckle off and just marry it up on the other side with your set square. You're also going to want to mark where the stitching ends. So where we've got our centre hole, you want to mark about 3 eighths to a half inch back. If you've got a larger collar, you can move more. If you've got a narrow collar, you can do it less. This part is totally up to you. So once you've done that on both sides, you can then set your dividers to a distance that you like, in from the edge, and mark straight up both sides of the leather. We will then be using a coin or a round object just to get the nice sort of egg shaped curve on the end of our stitching. This will just finish it off nicely. So once you've marked on where your stitch marks will be going, you want to stitch mark all the way around your dog collar. When you get to the ends of your dog collar, to doing the uh, circle bits around the ends, uh, if you just lift your sort of stitch mark up so it's angled to one side, uh, you can do this bit a lot easier. Um, you can also get two two stitch markers, which will make the job uh, even easier for you. But uh, for the time being, if you haven't got one of them, just angle your stitch mark um, just to one side and you'll be able to get around the edge quite easily. So these are the studs that I'm using. I'm using the larger half inch ones. Uh, these have two little uh, feet on the bottom which will be um, sort of going through the leather and we'll fold them over and tap them down, securing them. You can also get sort of smaller 3 8 one as well, like this little one here. And you can also get round studs as well. There are many other studs you can get online. Uh, these are the ones that I prefer. Now to make the holes for our uh, little legs of the studs, you want to get a set of um, small screwdrivers and then with the flat heads you just want to sand them down both sides uh, with a file so they're nice and sharp. So as you can see here uh, this uh, smaller one fits the exact same size as the legs of my square studs that I will be using. Okay so now I'm going to want to put our buckle and d-ring onto the collar so we know where they will sit once stitched in and so we can then mark out where our studs will go. Now I'm just using the half inch square studs on mine so I'm just going to lay them out. I like to lay the first and the last ones to start with and then I can decide where the rest will go afterwards as to how many I can fit on. So this is quite a short collar, so I'm only going to be able to fit five studs on this. If you're having sort of a large small combination or sort of a square and a round combination, you can decide how you want these to go. Once you've done that and you've got, you're happy with where they are, mark where your first and the last one will go to. And then you can mark from there how wide they are and how much room you've got left uh, in between for your other studs to go. So here I'm just marking out sort of where the first and the last one we're going to go to and then you mark your centre from there, remembering to mark, um, for me, quarter inch either side of the centre as to where the sort of stud will actually sit to and then you can mark again halfway between those two uh, for the second and fourth studs. So once you've marked them out and you're happy with them, you just want to even up the uh, holes that you've uh, marked uh, so they're in the centre of the collar. Now we want to put a little bit of leather underneath your collar 
and using your sharpened um, screwdriver you just want to mark all, oh, punch all the way through the leather So once you've punched through for your uh, your little legs to go through, you can now put your studs in place on your collar. Now these studs ha have long enough legs that they can go straight through the full thickness of the leather that I'm using. If you have studs with shorter legs, you may need to split this part of your collar as well. Once you've put your studs in place, using a set square, you or whatever tool you have to hand, um, you want to make sure the leather is nice and sort of set in around it and then fold the legs over with the ends of either a ruler or like I use my set square for this and just do this for all the legs uh, of the studs that you have put in. Once you've done that you just want to tap them down with a hammer um, just gently so you don't dent them and this will make sure that they are fixed in place. You can now put your buckle and your d-ring on Now, uh, to make it so that there's not a huge lump either side of the D-ring, I like to put in two little wedges. So for this, you just want to get a strip of leather that's the same width as your collar and just scythe a little bit off. You want it so it's scythed to nothing, so there's no lump either before or after it. And then you just want to attach these in just in front and just behind of your D-ring. Now the buckle that I'm using is a whole buckle, so I will not be having a loop on this collar. If you've got just a normal buckle, uh, you will be wanting to make a loop and you will want to sort of tack it in at this point as well. Okay, so once you're done tacking in your uh, wedges, you want to set the rest of the strip um, so it's even along the back of your collar. If it's too high up in one place, it's going to be too low down on the other side, meaning people will see the flesh, which is not what you want. You want it so it's nice and level with your collar. You can put a bit of glue on this, like I have here, or you can just tack it in. So we can now start stitching our dog collar. For this, you want to do a one stitch back stitch like we do on all our items uh, and you also want to then go just over the edges um, so loop your threads over the edge and make that nice and tight there next to the buckle so once you've done that you can now stitch your collar as normal So when we get to the D-ring of our collar, you want to stitch right up into the front of it and we will then miss out one stitch mark and have a long stitch that goes sort of just behind it. Once you've done that, you will then go back a stitch and then continue forwards. So effectively you will have three stitches over the D-ring. We do this just so it reinforces this area a bit as this is where the brunt of the tension is needed. Uh, sort of when your dog's on the lead, the D-ring is what's taking all the strength of your dog and so this bit just reinforces it a little bit. Once you've done that, you can then continue stitching your dog collar as normal. Now my camera ran out of battery before I got to the other side of this, uh, but when you do get back to your D-ring on the other side of your collar, you want to make sure that that long stitch is even on both sides. So to do this, once you're close to it, if you just take it out of the um, clams and count how many stitches there is to the first part of that, um, d-ring so of the long stitch so not say if it's six on the top side you'll want to count so you've got six stitches on the other side and just mark out where your skipped one is and sort of continue stitching um, along there and remember to do your one and a half stitch back as well as stitching over the edge on the other side so once you've done stitching you want to just cut the end of your lining piece nice so to do this you just want to use your head knife and follow the line of the stitches that you've just made you can put something metal like a ruler underneath this. I've done this a lot so um, I know sort of uh, what I'm doing here and how hard I can push uh, sort of my knife. 
and you just want to follow those stitches around on both sides to get a nice little egg point on that part of your collar. And once you've done that, again with your number one edge tool, just edge that little bit that you've just cut. Okay, so we're now going to restain our collar. Remember, uh, when you're doing this, you want to sort of get the little wedges that you have done, and also where you've just cut uh, the end of your lining piece, uh, you need to stain that bit also. If you've got a loop uh, on your dog collar as well, this will be the stage where you want to block that up as well with your loop sticks. So once you've finished with your staining and polishing, you'll then recrease the whole of your dog collar. We're now going to punch the holes of our dog collar. So if you've got a spare part and you want to just test the size of the uh, hole you need from your uh, rotary punch, you can do um, just before you go into doing the main ones on your dog collar. And you just want to punch those five holes. Okay, so once you've done that, you should now have your finished dog collar. Okay, so that's it for this tutorial. Hopefully you've now got all the skills needed to make your own studded dog collar. If you have any questions uh, or need any advice, please leave a comment in the comment section and I will try and help you out. Anyway, thank you for watching. Uh, if you liked the video, please hit the thumbs up button and subscribe for more videos and tutorials. Thank you.